It sounds so windy outside. Let's open the workshop door. Wow. These trees scare me just a little. Oh, I love the cryptomeria over there. Nice privacy trees. These pines are awfully big. But let's go back into the workshop. inside where it's nice and cozy let me close my door and latch it or the wind will pull it open for sure sorry about all the moving around so we're gonna have a play date with the well it's my dream journal but I've been drawn to that journal lately and I think we're gonna do some art in it let's get you up here stand and zoom in a little bit and now let me get my flip-flops it's warm enough not to have to have my regular shoes but the cement floor out here gets cold so I have to have something underneath the soles of my feet oh what do I want let's get to a page where we can work this is the one we did last time this is where my dreams live I've been thinking so much about the importance of positive, just positive thinking and positive affirmations and taking time to really reflect. Let me move this paper. To really reflect on what, what we're doing and sometimes why we're doing what we're doing and if we're happy, you know, to just take the time. I feel like I used to spend so much more time thinking. Now, maybe it's because like when I raised my children, I didn't even have a cell phone. We didn't have cell phones. Some people had those big clunky things in their cars if they were like salesmen or whatever. Uh, but we're all so distracted now with social media, so many platforms, so much going on all the time. And I do think it's still important to take time to just think, just think about who, where we are in the moment. Um, I am really in the mood for a distressed, grungy page, I think. Maybe that's not the right word. I want some, I want paper, I want coffee stains, I want um, vintage words and images. I wonder if there's any stain in the bottom of this. And of course I see how blue that water, ooh, that's, <laughs> talk about grungy. That was some dark coffee in there. I'm wondering if we just get a few splatters off of the brush to start with. And we're definitely just playing. This is not there are no expectations here. I have a thought or a quote that I want to put on this page. So uh, while that sits there for a moment, I'm gonna grab a container that has a lot of old pages in it. I know, well that's from that old, old book that was burned around the edges. Uh, I included some of those pages in a, in a fun pack not too long ago. You can see, it was like Naples Museum or something. Oh, look, I like that. So there's a little CD envelope with some uh, old, old cutouts. These were from, I bought those thrifted and it's where somebody had actually cut out paper dolls, probably uh, like the turn of the century. I have some things mixed in some of these containers that I pull from. Um, let's get one of these. And, Sorry to not be right here in front of the desk, but I wanted to pull some old papers and I'm trying to do less editing. The, you know, I want the video to be quality for everybody, but the more editing I do, it seems like the less I'm able to put on the channel because it takes longer to get the videos done. Um, just looking at this, 
you know, maybe it's a chance to see, and we can cover this up, up if we don't want it. You can see how the pigment has settled. This is not necessarily grungy, but it's not, not grungy. I had never bought the Recollections brand. It's a glitter mist instruction, shake well before use. I've had people leave comments that if you're using a pigmented, like a metallic spray or paint, they said, I'm not shaking, me, Lynn, you're not shaking them nearly enough. And I know ideally I could put something around this so that we don't, oh, well, that's neat. I'm not, um, <laughs> I'm not a complete like neat, neat freak or whatever. Things don't have to be perfect. I really want to lay this down on something to soak up that, the color on that side. So I'm just going to lay that behind me on the floor for right now somewhere and let me look at that <laughs> that's the only thing I don't like okay sorry about that I had an alarm to go off on my phone I didn't even know I had one set and going back to this paper that we pulled out looking at the um Huh. Tell me what you eat, and I will tell you what you are. That must be a quote from somebody who was in the school or whatever. And let's take this. <clears throat> well, now my hand really is covered. Um, oh, I know what I was saying. <laughs> Look at that. That's the only thing I don't like about these sprays and, and things. Maybe I should wear gloves out here, but I don't want to wear gloves. Um, I just, I don't. So let's just start pulling some papers and putting them down with some glue. I like my tacky glue. I have some glue sticks out here, but I keep those mostly for uh, going back and forth to, you know, to the house. Like if I'm working inside, if it's cold or whatever, and I'm sitting on the couch with Jason. I usually keep my glue sticks for that kind of thing. So let's just start putting 101 vases used in funeral rites. Uh, so this, this entire section is about terracotta, and this was from that very old book. It was from the late 1800s, I think. So, um, let's see if we can tear this down to just those words. We might glue that across the butterfly. And let me show you what I've already got over here. This is, the, this is one of the headers for that chapter, Glass and Terracotta. That is where I just laid that stencil over there. This is from pressing it down. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. When I go in, I will clean my hands with some really good soap and I have a brush that I use just for my fingernails and hands to get them clean. But isn't that gorgeous? Uh, we could end up incorporating this into the page. Well, I'm sure we will. I love that burned edge. And it's okay if things get layered and covered up. Let's see, we're picking up ink on the other side of that. I do love the way that is written there. I don't want to lose those words. <laughs> Let me be careful how I tear it. Um, glass and terracotta. So maybe we could fold this right there before the word glass. I'm, I'm amazed at how strong these pages are after all that time. And this book looked like it had fallen into a fire or maybe was in a fire, a house fire. 
and it was pulled out because all around the edge of the book, you can see how burned the pages ended up being. And I probably should wear gloves when I'm working with stuff like this. I don't want to end up damaging my body or my hands with these pigments. Probably should protect my hands. Any thoughts on that? And I should probably take better care of my hands and my skin anyway. Like, I should choose not to get that all over my hands. So there's our little fold that we made. Let's lay this down. I'm okay if it kind of hangs over the edge. And what could we use to make some nice ink? Or, yeah, ink or color spots. Is this... So here is a watercolor pencil. Oh, we got that blue mixed in there a little bit, and it's not so bad. I'm not... I don't dislike that at all. But I don't really like that you can see those marks. So let's... Um, like the marks from the pencil. What color is this? That one's darker. Burnt umber. And it's just kind of running around everywhere. That's thick paper underneath there too. And I want to be able to see those words, so I just dabbed up some of the some of what was falling across there. Who would you use? It's funny how people are drawn to different images. Um, for some reason, I'm drawn to this one. One of the exhibits at the um, museum Jay and I visited when she was here, we went to Nasher Museum of Art, which is very close to my house. I'm really fortunate to have it so close. And there was uh, an artwork that showed, I may, if I have a picture, I'll post it here. I don't remember if I have one or not. Um, all of these, the images were sort of like this. They were like yearbook images, but the names had been removed and the images had been blurred on purpose to show how people's identity get lost in certain situations. And there were, it was really neat. It was a grid of photographs. All the photographs were blurred and underneath each photograph, they had mounted a light, like with a bendable neck that was shining back on the photos. So there were all these pictures, all these lights. And uh, it had to do, it was tied in with Holocaust uh, victims a as well. Just that lost identity. And I like using this. Maybe there's some way that we can make this kind of a vague uh, picture because it is about dreams, of course. The journal is about dreams, I mean. I really like this color we're getting right here. This would be a really good example of the way I want to start organizing things. I love putting images in spaces and containers that kind of alter the image. Like, uh, this is just where I was storing these, but using like CD envelopes because you have this sort of um, cellophane or acetate or, uh, you know, you can have, what's that other, um, can't remember what it's called, different materials that change the way the image feels. And I think for this one, I just grabbed something that was close by, but I would love to have things organized to where when I want something like this, all of my like picture altering plastics or, or sleeves or whatever are together. Uh, that would help me. And of course, people work differently. If people have different things, artists have different things that they want to use. Is that one of the alcohol inks? I kind of want an alcohol ink for this. What I want to do is that I need to find something that's not going to flash. I go to the same colors all the time. So I end up, sorry, I'm digging. I end up with colors that I don't use as much. This is 
Th that's calendula. That might be an okay color. And I know that, you know, alcohol ink is different because it's different from like watercolors. It does stain non-porous materials, um, you know, like glass and stuff like that. I was just wondering if I ran some under the edge of this and then kind of folded it over so that we're not putting the ink on the paper, but we're getting the effect of her having something over her face. And now, where's my stapler? I brought it out so it could be right here on the desk. And you know what we could do? Where is my... I definitely don't want to get this alcohol ink on my hands. It is so staining. So let's um, see if we can pull some of the ink out of there. And we could decide to fold this over in a different way. Like, that's not so bad. That's awesome. I forgot to put staples in it. But let's see if this one's got staples. I love these little staplers to carry in my art bag. They hold the regular size staples, but the stapler itself is small. So let's do this. If there was some way to grunge that, um, I need to buy some, some new alcohol ink in dark colors. I wonder, yeah, I'm not, I like to sometimes um, grunge up the staples if I can. I bet if I laid this in my greenhouse for a few days, it would get grunged up. So wet in there. So we're gonna put her on this page somewhere. Why don't we add one of these little, um, little boy images too? Because this is about everybody. This uh, quote that I saw, and I don't remember it word for word, but I, um, I can't remember if I've mentioned this to everybody or not. I know I've showed on my channel before the beautiful painting that I have of the angel and my friend Brandy did it. Her name is Brandy Duff. Uh, she has a website called Brandy Made It. She had a website. Um, she had the most beautiful spirit. She's been battling breast cancer for, uh, I don't remember how many years. She was in her 40s. She just passed away the end of December and I've had her on my mind a lot. And I'm ashamed that I did not realize until recently that she passed away in December. It was the end of December, but still, I went all of January thinking about her and she was really heavy on my mind. Um, for obvious reasons. I mean, I knew that she was sick, but I also just kept thinking, I've got to check on her. I've got to check on her. I wanted to go see her, and it never worked out um, for me to, to do that. And, you know, I, I, I could have made time. It's, I'm just, I'm not going to offer any excuses. I will say, though, that with my new job, um, you know, getting back into something where I'm working at Joann's and having the responsibility of being there anywhere from two to four days a week. Two, it was like two or three days a week starting out, but now I've, um, I'm there a lot more. And then with my daughter and my grandson and my son who has two children and just, you know, the holidays, the next thing I know, Brandy is gone. She had such a beautiful spirit though, and she was a fighter uh, just with her. Not even, like, when you hear people had a long, courageous battle with cancer, until you see somebody who chooses to continue to live every single day, that that saying or that thought is not as powerful as it can be. She painted right up until the end, even in spite of neuropathy and things that I know were bothering her. And she posted about this openly. Um, I'm, not, I'm not telling secrets. Brand, Brandy was... She was truly an inspiration. This quote, though, um, it's never too late to start to be strong and to be who we want to be. Um, and it's easy for me to say that from maybe where I'm sitting, like not, you know, I could have something wrong with me and I'm not aware of it. But sometimes I think, well, how would I act 
if I knew something was wrong and, you know, I had a disease I needed to fight or, um, I don't know. I think you all know what I mean. And sometimes I get really discouraged with myself because even though I don't consider myself super overweight, I'm not outside of my weight range that's considered healthy. I have gained some weight and sometimes I just kind of give up on myself. I think, well, I've already messed up today, so I'm just giving up. Well, I don't want to be that way. I want to be more intentional about, you'll see it when you see the quote. And I'm trying, I'm, I'm, I've stopped here because I'm trying to figure out where I want all these things. Maybe put her up here. I need a place for this thought that I'm going to write out. So let's let her sit for a minute and let me write that thought down. Okay, I'm glad I did this. I took the time to uh, go back and see this quote uh, where, where I found it online. Somebody shared it with me. Um, well, somebody shared it on Facebook in a group that I'm in. And there's no, it wasn't attributed to anyone. It was just written just like this. You will never hear another person's voice more than you hear your own. Be intentional about the way that you talk to yourself. Um, and that's what I'm getting at. Like, I think I have a very negative inner voice a lot of the time. I don't know if it is just wired into me. Uh, I don't know if it's because that kind of runs in the family with some of the women in my family. I don't know if it's from the years of abuse that I endured in a marriage. I don't know if it was the, the very strict religious group that I was in that, um, you know, told you what you could and couldn't do, even down to the kind of clothes you could wear. I don't know. I don't know what makes me talk like that to myself. I think we all could look back with depression and regret and sadness. Um, but it's good to just look back in a way that's not critical. Say, well, you know, this is, this is where I am right now and it doesn't matter what has happened or what is going to happen. I can't control a lot of any of that. <laughs> you know, we can control some things like if I'm overeating, I can have a really positive voice towards myself and say, look, you can do this. Don't give up at the end of the night because you're frustrated and say, well, who cares if I eat a bag of potato chips? Talk to yourself in a different way. Um, I hope I'm making sense. I really do. I don't know what makes me the way I am though, but I want to be more intentional about the way I talk to myself. Even this little inner voice that makes me just you know, give up on myself sometimes. So why don't we, as far as putting her on the page, I can add more staples and I'm not really opposed to doing that. Uh, where did, there it is, I'm looking for my stapler and I need to add staples to that other one. Um, there it is, I laid it over to the side. Oh yeah, that was going through quite a bit of paper. So, let's put that there. We could also, let's see, what's on the other side here? Just some collage, it's, it's not a big deal if we um, have the staples there. I do want some more, um, some more splotches. I definitely want more layers on this. So let's go back into this thing I had coffee in and add some more really dark drops. If you add a drop over your words or something, you can come back right away and remedy that with a napkin or something. Oh, let's see. I feel like we need something really dark. And again, I'm out of my I think I'm out of my black alcohol ink. This is a, a really dark color and the bottle's so stained I can't even tell what's in here anymore. I wonder. I'm going to just put that there. We'll give it some time to dry.
That's so cool. Carolyn, I think you made that for me. I've got it on the desk because I really want to incorporate it into something, but I'm, I have a journal that I want to put together with some clock pieces and some fabric that my friend Kim sent to me. Uh, and that, I feel like this is going to tie in with that. So I'm going to put that back over to the side. And let's just see, what do else do we want? Let's get some inspiration. I keep um, magazines out here just to flip through to get ideas. I love the colors on this. Uh, I always look up the artists when I, when I go through these and get so inspired. That's really pretty. Kathleen Davis. Oh yeah, there's so much more we could do on our page. I need to go over to Barnes and Noble and get the newest newest art journaling magazine. Uh, I've been subscribed to it for the past year, but um, I let my subscription run out. So I need to get more. See, it's always lovely to make something layered to add on top of your page, which we already know, but sometimes when I sit down, I, I get kind of lost and feel like I don't really know what to do or what to add. You can add a little portion of a snippet roll. I don't really want that pink in there though. I think at the top of this, there's more in the gold yellow. Um, oh, and that's got even a little bit of blue. We could cut a piece off of this. Hmm, this is what ends up making a journal really chunky. And it's okay with me if we get part of that tag. Let's see, we're gonna have that string there. It's gonna pull right out, that's okay. It's um, sewn on on the other. Okay, let me put, let's put this away. I don't, um, I definitely wanna just put this away while I have it out. And I love that I can roll it up really fast on this wooden clothes pin. Let's put that back over to the side and see what we might want to do with this. We don't even have to keep it a hole like this. Uh, and I feel like as far as some mark making, you know, that's gotten so popular. I like to sometimes just look at the way people are making their marks. I don't necessarily see a lot of that in here. Wow, that's really pretty. Lynn Moncrief, she has a lot in there. Look, still your thoughts. I love that. And I love the layers there. Um, what do we want to do? I like that just sitting right there. It's nice texture to add to the page. Let's make that run a little bit. Get some more of that grunge around the edge of that. And then we could even come back and staple a piece. But what do I want? Maybe. Maybe this one. I like the little beads across there. Or we could, let's do this. Let's put some glue on this end, the tacky glue, because it's going to be, it's going to be sticking to paper over on this end. And then maybe for this section, since it's going to be on that cellophane, we will put another staple in to hold it down. What else? might we add? <laughs> There's a lot of things we could do. I think I'm going to not put that on. I'm just looking at this. I kind of want some really dark marks on there. 
and I like using Sharpies because they, they stay dark. Um, let's just go right down the side here. that. You now we could also add more writing in a different in a different font. This was written with, let me show you, I did this when the camera was off. I used a Sharpie pen which has got this really fine tip. It's good for calligraphy. Um, I could have looked through all my pens. I've got the Sharpie, the um, actual calligraphy pen. And what else do I have? That's the Sharpie pen. I've got this Elegant Writer. Oh, what color is that though? It's black. Um, so what if we said, you are the keeper of your dreams. That page is still a little wet there, and that's okay. You are the keeper of your dreams. And it's really okay if it feels not even um, legible in some spots. I mean, I, I want to be able to read it, but it's okay if somebody has to stop and really look at a word. It doesn't have to be perfect. What else do we want on this page? Let's see what other, um, what am I doing here? Where are my Sharpies? There we go. Raw Sienna. These are those little tubes of watercolors that I ended up with that are just so amazing. I don't want any of those colors, I can tell already. You've got the burnt umber raw sienna and I don't want light red. Still having so much fun. Just kind of getting to know these paints. there. I don't feel like emptying that big thing of water, but I think I do want some clean water for that. Good grief, there's that string. that string. I don't know. It's not it's not behaving, so we're going to let it go. We're going to cut it loose and maybe it'll show up another day. I feel like we need some dark. Oh, that's pretty. Look at that. And of course, the kind of paper you use, you can see the lines and the texture in this paper. Uh, which I'm not opposed to, but just a plain, uh, like smooth copy paper is going to look different. I don't, I'm going to waste these. that. I like the colors. And I definitely wanted to get this message in here. I saw that quote and I said, oh, that's got to go in a journal where I can come across it later and be inspired. I'm going to try not to do a ton of editing to this. Uh, you know, I love to hear from all of you. I need to catch up on comments. I've been working so far all week. 
What is today? 228 24 The month is almost over. So I will see everybody really soon. I have so many projects I'm working on. I want to get the March um, zine published. And I need to get the March Pen Pal Mail up on my Kofi site. I'm going to try to have more packs this time. And they're going to be the same price every month with like the same weight, the same postage, and they're U.S. only. I need to get that figured out and get that listed. I'm sure I could add more to this. Buttons, threads, stitching. I could put words on here, but we're just going to keep it like it is for right now. All right, I'll see you soon. Bye for now.